Hello my fellow spuds. Today we're going to be taking another look at the sapling. The beta that was out a little while ago has now been made stable, so I thought I would give it a go. Uh, I did want to do this uh, months ago now, and I actually recorded it about three, four times, and it was just too many bugs, and I got really frustrated, and I just felt like I couldn't make a decent video out of the footage I'd got. But we're going to give it another stab now that it's in a stable version, so we're going to give it a go. Now you can probably see there's a few different things that have been added. We've got the same stuff that we had before, so we've got mountain heights, uh, percentage of mountains, oceans, blah blah blah. However, you might be able to see this, which is wildfire risk, which is very very cool. So fires can happen on forests, and obviously at the moment is basically a 0% chance that we will get wildfires. So we can raise that chance by going from here, and we can raise that up to... A maximum of 5% chance, so I think we'll probably stick with a 0.5% uh, chance, that seems about right, or just under. There we go. And what we can also do is add a volcano, which I really want to try and do. Oh, that's very nice, I like that. So where should we place that? Uh, actually, let's finish doing the map generation first. I just want something that's got plenty of ocean, but also has a fair amount of land. There's been quite a few people asking for a cold biome. Look, I think that's pretty good. Highest it will probably get to is probably about minus 5. And it'll drop down to minus 50 on the fringes. I think that's pretty good. Now we can add a volcano. I'm thinking on this little island here. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. It sticks out the atmosphere. Amazing. Let's have a look at our colours. So expected colours is that. We could change it to something a little bit brighter, maybe. Make it really alien looking. That's pretty cool, like really, really muted colours. I quite like that. And I think that way we can then make our animals very bright and that'd be pretty cool. So, just jump straight in. So it seems like the developers squashed most of the more extreme bugs anyway, so I'm hoping this will perform a little bit better. Oh, look! We now have snow and clouds. That's very cool. Oh, the water's lapping at the water. This is nice. This is very, very, very nice. So we've got a volcano here. Oh, we can hold shift to move around. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I'm not sure if that was in before. That's a lot nicer. Moving around feels a lot easier. Cool. So we've got a very, very, very cold place. As you can see, the stuff on the top right has changed a little bit. So we've still got the random mutations of algae, plants, and animals. However, the temperature and ocean level has changed to a fire. And we can now start a wildfire. We can get a meteorite strike, which is quite fun. And we can make the volcano erupt and we can also increase the chance of wildfire from this uh little menu as well which is quite nice but we're gonna leave it like that for the minute for now i think we should probably just start by making some algae now we've got this type of algae which wasn't in there before so this is like microscopic algae this will just kind of float around so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to i think maybe a bright let's do a red we'll be able to see it there we can't change the blades we can't change that because it doesn't hold on to anything it just drips this algae colour is not suitable for the sunlight on the planet. Ah, so we have to change that to a bit brighter, I guess. Yeah, it's to be a bit brighter. Okay, that's cool. Well, maybe let's change it to a yellow then. I'll do. And it should be able to go in most of the sea. So let's drop a bunch there. Drop a bunch over there. Drop a bunch over there. Bit there. Cool. Right, and they've changed it so you can change the amount of organisms you can actually have, so you can have a cap of it. I think I'm going to stick a 500 each just because that seems plenty. Uh, I might change that down a little bit just in case, but I think that's not too shabby. As you can see, we now have our yellow algae under the ocean. It's quite nice. Just sitting there, chilling. And we could time jump to make that a little bit more prominent, but I'm going to leave it for now. Oh, it's gone dark. I really like these clouds. I think they really add a lot to it, so it's quite nice. We're going to make another uh, type of underwater plant, a more common algae, I think. That one. I think that one will do. And a very pale pink. And that can go in spots under the water, but not a huge amount. So I'll place a few down. And hopefully this will mutate when we turn mutations on. And it will be able to do its thing. So we'll turn them on. Uh, we will rack that up to, say, 20%, so that for this video, we can see the mutations quicker. And then we're going to do a land plant. I think we're going to stick with a couple of land plants for now. But right from the get-go, you might be able to see we've got a few different things here. So if we go across, we've got... I don't think these seeds were in there before, these ones. So these are 
flying. So distance without wind, distance with strong wind, catches onto fur, provides enemy when eaten. So that's very nice. This stuff can be drifted through the breeze. We've also got this one, which survives in water and it sinks. That one survives in water and it floats. So that's very, very nice. And we've got this one, which requires fire, apparently. So that's new. This one survives in water and it sinks as well. So we've got some really interesting plants. We're going to go for something fairly simple because we have to make sure that it can survive the really, really harsh temperatures. That one can go to minus 30. Okay, this has fairly good wind resistance. It's got good temperature resistance. That is a-okay with me. Energy used is minimal. Energy profit is pretty huge. Needed for fruit is minimal. We will put some fruit on there. So we want to have something that provides energy when eaten. That seems like a good idea for now. Uh, we've got a couple of islands, so it might be good to have something that does drift on the wind, but does provide quite a lot of energy. So harder to eat. Now we don't. We want something that's fairly easy to eat. Survives in water. It's not harder to eat. It provides some energy. Oh, but it sinks. We want something that floats. Yeah, like that one. But then that's hard to eat. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to go for one or the other, to be honest. Uh, that one sinks. Yeah, I think we're just gonna have to go for maybe this one. So it doesn't survive in the water, but it can go on the wind. So at least we could then pollinate the neighboring islands. I think that's quite nice. We'll do these round there. I think that's quite nice. We could have animal and wind pollination. Just as a little flower on the side. Right, there we go. We've got this weird little plant. You can see roots. We've got mangrove roots, which is very cool. So we've got stuff that can grow in the water. It can go on damp or wet, but it can't go on dry land. And it can only go in mostly clay type soil it can't go on rocky soil and it can't access deep water we could also go for this one which is kind of shallow roots so it needs damp slash wet ground water but it can survive in rocky slash sandy conditions or so we could go for this one which can survive in pretty much any ground softness but it has to be damp slash dry i think that's make one that can go to uh the dry aspect of things uh because ironically i think inland it's going to be the most survivable and if it gets down to minus 50 this plant wouldn't be able to survive anyway so it's going to be a very 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 pale purple uh, we could change the size of it which i might do i might make it a little bit bigger uh actually i could make it really big might as well and the bark i think inedible stem would be quite nice that one would have no profit that still has quite a decent profit the seeds stay asleep below 30 degrees or above 20 degrees and that's the only places really that the plant can grow in so i think that's pretty good no we don't want to lose leaves at all uh lose flowers no i think that'll do because if i think if we lose the leaves normally it would if we went for something that has photosynthesis in the trunk it could still survive quite well but i think with the leaves with with this trunk we've got it wouldn't be able to survive so that'll do and the fruit color we could change the fruit color a bit it doesn't affect it really at all because ours is just naturally brown i'll change it to purple we can also add this is new poison now we could change the poison uh, to really strong, change the different types, and different animals can have different resistances to different types of poisons. That's quite nice. Uh, we don't want any poison in our fruit, really. I think that's, <laughs> that's kind of a given, and that will do. What you could do is you could have, so fruit poison strength is maximum. You could have it set to a random one, and you could then have it so that the seeds survive within the body after eaten, and then when the animal dies, a new plant can spring from the body. So that's quite a cool way of doing it, but we're going to uh, just dump that there so we get quite a lot of profit we get lots of sunlight and lots of water from the roots lowest edible part is there okay i might then if that's the case pop some down there like that so it's a bit of a weird step up and that way at least the uh, smaller animals can also get to it which is quite nice uh places where small animals can sit we could have some birds or something be able to sit on it but i'm going to leave it for now so if i put like a branch for example I think this is new as well. I can't remember exactly. If we put like a branch, it says place where animals can sit, one. So an animal could just perch on that branch, which is quite nice. But we're going to leave that for now. And it should hopefully be able to... Oh, it can't. Why not? We can grow some on this island. Okay, well that might have to do. So we'll leave that and hopefully the ones from this island will mutate and be able to go to this island. But we will now make another type of species. And this is brand new, which is quite cool. So, uh, we've got this, which is like, it's alright. It's not a bad plant, but what we can do is we can change it 
from the standard size to this size and this is grass which is very very cool so we can have it really spiky grass we can have it really small the leaves that we've got are just the little grass stalks and they cannot live past zero degrees we'll have a look there might be somewhere where they can live but i doubt it we'll try uh that then it can at least live in the water that might be all right we'll see if there's anywhere where this can live plants not have any growing seeds yeah we need some seeds on this what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have it so that it sinks because grass can grow underwater so i think we're gonna chuck a couple of these on we've got some weird little <laughs> weird little seeds at the bottom which is quite nice and uh can you put i don't think yeah you can't put like stalks onto grass we could put some flowers i think so we've got animal pollination that might be quite nice and that should be fine the plant can only survive zero degrees but so it will only be able to survive on the fringes that's not too bad uh barely anywhere yeah the temperature is too cold basically everywhere well, we'll put some in the water and then once you place it it doesn't grow like a single crop it grows a square of the grass what we'll do is we'll just place some around the fringes here and we'll see if any of that can survive i think that will do is there any over here oh there's a big patch over here we can plant there we go so we've got some grasses under the water let's zoom in and have a look at them oh they are very bright <laughs> i can't see oh why is it like that <laughs> it's so bright uh, it hurts my eyes i don't think i set it to that but that's blinding grass <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just because it's night time for some reason it's glowing. But as you can see, if you zoom in, I think if you have it on like Fantastic, it shows it a bit better. But the lower quality you have, the less it looks like the grass you've made. But it does reminisce it slightly. It's got like the green for where we put the fruit and the flowers on. So it's, it's quite nice. And this will just uh, basically just replant itself over time, which is pretty cool. And stuff can eat it. Has all the plants we grew already died? They've already all died out wonderful okay maybe we'll have to make a different species then that's two from scratch we'll have to make a standard plant that can survive long term in the cold i guess we'll put it at that and then it should be able to grow in the water because the water is a lot warmer than the land so that should be quite cool uh the stem is edible that's fine with me if it's a very bright almost like white that'll do and we can have it that the photosynthesis in the stem and it's inedible yeah let's do the, that and then what's the energy use that's fine We'll do that. So I'm hoping this will be able to be... Yeah, there we go. That's a bit better. We've got a couple of patches of place we can put it down. Well, there we go. We've got our two plants, so we can have a look at them. So we've got those up there. Hopefully they will survive a bit longer. And we've got our various grasses underwater, which is very nice. I'm not sure if they're already mutated a bit, because there's some with purple flowers and some not, which is quite weird. We've got both types of algae, and it looks like some have already mutated. So we've got some big purple ones and some little green ones. We haven't even accelerated time, so that's very nice. Yeah, that one has thin leaves and that has very thick ones. That's very nice. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start introducing some animals now. And that's where the real fun begins, because there are a lot of new animal parts. Uh, what I'm thinking is we're going to need something that can probably go into the water as well. So we're going to give whatever this creature is a uh, lovely tail. There we go. Lovely. And that should then be able to go in water which is fine then we're going to want to go down we can see all the ridiculous amount of parts we've got so we've got all the wings we've got these i don't know what the point of these is i'm presuming they're meant to have attack but there isn't any i suppose they can hold weight is the point we could have it where it could glide uh, that can glide but it can't hold any weight it can also climb we've got this weird little thing that can fly and also <laughs> it can swim it doesn't have any legs, so maybe we should put down a couple of little legs. Speed in water, speed on land. There we go, that's fine. And then what we're going to want to do is give it a mouth, and this is where all the cool stuff comes in. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different uh, food types. So stuff that can eat eggs, and also on the top left you can see that is the microalgae that we've got currently growing in the water. We've got this, which means that it's like parasitic, so it can drink blood from stuff which is interesting we've got meat plants and i'm presuming one is like live animals and one is like carrion i think that's meant to be what that is uh that is fruits the different i think 
I'm not quite sure what the top left one is. I think that's seeds. Not quite sure what the different types of meat are. Uh, but we can eat all types of meat with that. That looks like it can eat bark from trees. I think that's what that's meant to be, so that's interesting. This can eat all sorts of meat. That can eat all sorts of fruits. Oh no, that's the harder fruit on the right-hand side. So that is like a nut these birds can crack. I don't know what the left one is. Probably a different type of fruit. Uh, this one can eat eggs, microplankton, and some animals. So yeah, lots and lots of weird and wonderful wacky stuff. Uh, what we're probably going to want to go for is something that can eat plankton and plants. Is it something that it can eat plankton and plants? Uh, plankton, mineral, plants, yes. And we do have more. Oh, here we go. Uh, that can eat pretty much everything as well. Okay, that's let's give it that mouth. It's a fairly simple mouth, but that should be able to survive, I guess, like that. And it's fairly basic, so it should be able to evolve, be able to eat a bunch of stuff. So actually, let's put the most basic one on. I'll do. And what we can then do is we can give it some ears so it can hear the pitches. Does it say the pitch that this does? It doesn't actually have a cry pitch. Some of them have different cry pitches, as you can see. Fairly standard range, I guess. That'll do. And then we want some eyes. We want stuff that's like the most advanced color. So really want the whites. I guess we'll go for the basic one one eye in the top of its head there we go this can survive in water and land that can survive in just water the one in the size in water and land is only zero to 20 degrees this one is both and just in water i'll encourage it to go into water i guess that's quite good we then want this to be certain low temperatures plus 15 plus 50 i think that and then that should be fine uh, nest type. Oh, look, we can make nests. Right, conceals eggs. Now, we don't want any of them anyway, because we want stuff that's underwater, so that's fine. But that is quite cool that they can make nests. Like, that's like all these different types of nests as well. Depending on the types of mouths and arms you have, that's really nice. I like that. Color. We wanted, like, really bright colors, didn't we? Because we don't really have any of them anywhere else, because all the plants are really, really plain. So that'll do. But there's all these different new types of things well that's liquid storage i guess that's if you're in a desert that's quite nice so if there's very little water around it can have like a camel's hump that's awesome and then we've got milk if you want to have mammals so we can just have some udders on the back <laughs> if we wanted to oh but that's really nice i like that a lot uh, time in the water is infinite time land is six body part drag quite a lot if we're going to go underwater i guess we don't need these wings maybe i'll make a separate flying one because that's a lot more streamlined. And then we could make something that's probably a bit more adapted to speed in water. I can't want something that can grab, though. I guess that... That's fine, because we've got barely any body part drag. So that's alright. An underwater body part speed is great. The total swimming speed is not the fastest thing in the world. But hopefully it'll be alright. So it can climb, it can walk, it can't glide, and it can't fly. That's fine with me. It can hold some weight, I believe. So that's good. Expect age is 40. It can survive minus 50 to 15 degrees, which is perfect, because that's pretty much the temperature of this world, and it can attack, and it's got, well, some health. Uh, can eat at height. Is that just because it's underwater? Probably. Let's see how long this thing lasts. So, uh, obviously it can't really survive very well on land, but it can survive pretty much anywhere in the sea. Well, in the shallows, anyway. It can't survive right in the depths, but that is fine. We'll chuck a few around here. We've now got some grasses, we've got two types of algae, although plenty has already uh, begun to grow. And look at this thing! How cute is that? Seems to be swimming into a volcano, uh, but that, that's fine. I guess it knows what it's doing. And it's eating the grass! Adorable. <laughs> it's just having a whale of a time, eating the grass and just living its best life. This is nice. It's very, very nice. It looks like one's already died. But this can eat basic meat as well, which is quite cool. So this should be able to eat dead ones as well. So hopefully that won't be too bad. As you can see, we've got the different micro algae which is forming. So they've got some yellows and some more greeny ones over there, which is quite nice. This is nice. Oh, we've actually got one that seems to have gone onto land. There's nothing for you there. I don't really know what you're doing. I think you're probably going to die. You're jumping up and down. But quick, go back into the sea. <laughs> oh, he died. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he might. Okay, well, um, 
hopefully these are going to have a lovely time. And what we can then do is make, uh, I think, I'm, I don't know whether these plants are going to survive. That's the only reason I'm hesitant to make some more land animals. I guess we should make one that is land but can technically go into the sea. Maybe a tall necked one like this. Yeah, there we go. I guess like a terror bird style thing would be quite cool. Like a really hairy terror bird. Uh, attack. Yeah, streamlined. There we go. That's more like a vulture than a terror bird, but that'll do. Now, the color of the animals is a brighter color, so we don't need to have the greater range. We can stick with probably like these. So what do they look like? Oh, that's kind of terrifying. There we go. Look a bit more bird-like. Have some, have some little claws on its neck. Have some ears on its neck. I guess that one. Oh. Oh, this is weird. Uh, in the middle, please. There we go. Perfect. Then the big question, do we want it to have wings? I don't know if we do. We could have it have, oh, like that, and it can glide in the water. Oh, perfect. This is going to be a really, really good, it's like water bird kind of thing. Traits, we're going to want it to survive on land, and we want it to have thick fur so it can survive anywhere. So it's not probably going to be able to go everywhere, but I think that's the same as the other one. This animal is too heavy for its legs, is it? Oh. A bit too fat for its body that's amazing i quite like the idea of it being red uh, we'll keep it fairly small and that i think will do if we're going to do the underwater predator bird i think we should do it right so let's give it duck feet we'll then give it these little little flappy arms now we've got this underwater predator duck <laughs> which is quite cool we'll see if it survives if not we'll have to maybe make it smaller and more streamlined and then it will probably go faster in water I guess it's just too many body parts. If we took that off. Oh, no, that's okay. That's just ruined it now. Okay. I have <laughs> i don't know what I've done, but I've made it significantly worse. It's just ridiculously tall now. I don't hate it, if I'm totally honest. Going in the water, if it can. Yeah, it can go in the shallows as well, but it should be able to pick off any carrion and stuff when they die on the land naturally. So let's chuck a couple down. <laughs> uh they seem to be trying to fly what are you what are you doing they are very confused they seem to want to try and be able to fly and they can't <laughs> i don't think that's intentional whatever's going on here <laughs> oh i've just made these flightless birds somehow be able to fly it's amazing i presume that's a bug probably due to the neck i think it's time that we jump ahead let's jump uh forward 500 years oh i like that that's nice it's separated it out. Oh, that's much smoother. I like that. I think doing it that way means that we don't have that awkward laggy jump. So it does look like, unfortunately, all our birdie friends died out. These ones seem to be going very strong indeed, which I'm pretty pleased about. Let's have a quick scout over the land. At least it looks like we have a couple of different types of plant. Some even look like they're trying to grow in the colder parts. It's very nice and some look like they've got uh, bark some don't lots of fruit uh, they've all got the same leaves but look they they've pretty much covered the land which is very nice uh so yeah some have different types of bark this is cool oh we've got the uh blinding grass still oh it's very blinding <laughs> we'll have to keep this distance it looks like we've got some with purple flowers some with green there is lots of types of algae that's cool some short some long some oh some green got multiple types of microalgae we've got red uh, white green yellow this is very cool yeah and the grass is spreading all the way around the outside so is that two different types of grass yeah we've got some white grass and some pink grass nice we do have multiple types of grass unfortunately it does look like uh all our birdie friends died which is a shame but these things seem oh look there's, oh, there's a purple one hello he looks pretty much no different apart from the fact he's purple, but that's that's quite cool that there are multiple species, which I was just about to say. I wonder if there are many different types. Right, here we go. So let's have a look. So we've got a bunch of these, 707 years old. So they've been going for a long time, 681. Ooh, zero alive. They, they were the first ones we had and they all died out. Loads of grasses. Uh, 119 of these animals. That's quite cool. Look at all the different types of algae. But yeah, zero of those birds. They did not even last a year. I think they essentially bugged out. Uh, we've got a couple of different species. 
Because this one we've got loads of. That one we've only got a couple of. Five of those purple ones, interestingly. Yeah, and you can see all the ones that kind of died off. So it looks like the, sh the taller trees all died out. So it's only the short stubby ones that are surviving, apart from that one, which is <laughs> a little bit phallic. Yeah, it's, it's got a bit of a, 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 a phallic root going on. Now that I know that, yeah, the trees are pretty damn good, we should make a animal that can survive on the land. One that's fully terrestrial, and one that I think is really, really good for the cold. So I think maybe let's try and make like something like a mammoth. I think that'd be really fun to do. So we have the parts for it. If we go all the way across, we should be able to make this. We want it to be pretty big. I want it to be really hairy, not eggs. We want it to be 100% a mammal. We can actually change the diet out. So uh, this is a new thing. So instincts we've seen before. So if it feels too cold, go away from it. If it feels too warm, go away from it. Uh, currently, the only thing it can eat is soft plant tissue. I'm wondering if we add milk, whether it will be able to have milk as well. If we give it like a big old udder underneath. We can't give it underneath. Give it a, a, a butt udder. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right, we got some we got some butt udders. Now, now it can eat, uh, drink milk. Okay, that's quite cool. Uh, <laughs> just got a butt udder. I wish we could put them underneath. I don't think we can right now anyway, which is a bit of a shame. We're going to have to do more advanced eyes so that it can see the full range. Do that one. Oh, there we go. You look kind of elephanty, I guess. Oh, four-eyed elephant. Oh, there we go. That's kind of there. <laughs> uh, and we'll give it some big old ears. There we go. Chunky legs. Four chunky legs. That's very elephantish, but I want to be able to give it some udders. Back udders? <laughs> I've got no idea. I guess we'll give it those. So they're not as noticeable. There we go. That seems about right. And that's quite a chunky little mammoth. I quite like it. Right, and then the colour. Obviously, we have to go for a pink one, don't we? There we go, like a pink elephant. I quite like that. And we get... Uh, we can eat at quite a good height, which is nice. We can go in the water. It's slow, but that's fine. That's completely normal. We expect age 120. Pregnancy is 27. That's that's pretty good, actually. Uh, can survive minus 45 to 19. That's pretty damn good. And it's got quite a lot of health. I like that. I'm hoping it'll be able to survive. Oh, yeah, it can survive a fair bit. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it can survive lots. Place a couple of these down. Look at our mammoth. Having a lovely time. He's jumping up and down. Yeah, he, he just ate a plant. The problem is whether these just kill all the plants now. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see whether the plants can keep up with being eaten. These should hopefully coexist quite a lot. These should heat the fruit and the grasses under the water. These should mainly consume the trees above the water. That'll be good. And I'm going to uh, jump forward. Let's try uh, 5,000 years. There we go. It's lagging a little bit, but I think that's just because of the sheer amount of mammoths that are everywhere on the map now. Look at the... <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. Oh, that's quite nice. Uh, why... Some of them are laying eggs, like soft eggs. Why have you evolved to do that? I've got no idea, because they can only survive in certain temperatures, not very good temperatures either. They've evolved so they can lay eggs underwater and on land. I didn't think this would happen. I thought they would stay in on the land, but it looks like they've uh, decided to take over the water as well. Oh, don't say that means that they've wiped out our green animals. Oh, God, uh, they seem to have been replaced by green elephants. <laughs> um, oh, no, I think they literally have outcompeted the original animals we had. No, that's a massive shame. I was hoping they would continue. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, our aquatic species seems to have just disappeared off the face of the earth. But it looks like we've got these uh, plants trying to grow under the water, which is quite nice. And they finally gained some height. We've got some proper looking trees. Maybe trying to outcompete the elephants eating them? Possibly. But that's a crazy number of elephants. <laughs> it still says we've got some alive. 
I have seen none. Where are they? Yeah, there's still quite a few of these ones alive. We've got a fair amount of elephants. Some of them have changed mouths. That one's got a smaller trunk, so it can eat the fruits, interestingly. One of them has changed so it doesn't produce milk anymore, interestingly. There's so many of them. There's only a couple of each species. Most of these will probably end up dying after a little while. That one's lost two of its legs. And that one's lost all its legs. <laughs> but what I've been waiting for, which I think will be quite cool, is this. We can change the temperature, we can change the ocean level, that's fine. But what I want to do is I want to start a wildfire. That starts a wildfire. Although the chance of a wildfire starting anywhere is pretty slim. But that's... There we go. Let's have a look, see what this does. Is it going to spread everywhere? Yeah, there we go, it's spreading. Looks like it's spreading to any nearby trees. So it's chances are this is gonna, probably going to wipe out most of the population of the plants on this island. And it will keep the ones on this island, which will be interesting. So that might mean that we get um, genetic variations in the trees island which will be interesting or more so anyway right although it looks like the fire's dying down oh it just died out oh so it just killed everything in that little area <laughs> okay fine we're gonna try a meteor now i think there that looks fun oh god <laughs> um the elephant is still swimming he's absolutely fine I don't know why he's fine. <laughs> he should have died. <laughs> I bet that's nice and toasty, just hanging there in the air. I think that's a bug. I think let's try again. Maybe one on land. Um, once again, pretty sure the meteors are slightly bugged still. But that's fine. We've just got these cool effects, these nice hot rocks that have landed <laughs> for them to bask in. But what they normally do is they make a little crater in the ground uh, and they kill everything in a small radius. Right, we'll leave that. And then the next one, which I wanted to see, was the volcano. So let's go to our volcano. Here we go. This is cool. Is that going to make land? Is that how it works? Or does it just kill everything nearby? I want to know if it will naturally make land when the uh, the lava hits the water. Here we go. Right. Slowly getting there. Just touching the grass at the moment. Oh, okay. It's gone over to the, the trees. Yeah, it's setting the trees on fire. Oh, so this island's going to be wiped out completely then. Oh, and it's, it stopped. Okay, so just set fire to everything. Right, okay. Right, well, I guess if that was on land, not a little island, it would probably be devastating. It'd probably set everything on fire. But that's still pretty nice. The lava set the trees on fire. I guess with all this activity, it might have increased the temperature a little bit. Change the temperature by 10. Do the ocean level by 10. Oh no, what's going to happen to the elephants now? <laughs> and that's fast forward time by, that's say, 20,000 years, just as one last hurrah. Right, I'm back. Um, I don't even know what I'm seeing. <laughs> We've got some red elephants, some bright pink elephants, some very bulbous plants. The lag is a bit intense. I think that's probably just from the sheer amount of uh, everything we fast forwarded. The grass has now, it's warm enough now that the grass can come onto land, not limited to underwater, which is interesting. Oh, but it's still so bright. I don't know why the grass is so bright. That elephant has four eyes. These ones all have two legs and four eyes. What is going on here? <laughs> 20,000 years and you've lost, you've lost your ears. No, that's a lie. You've got your ears, but they're tiny. You're still producing milk on your back. You've all got four eyes for some reason. Some of you have downgraded your eyes massively. This is so strange. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's a crazy weird looking thing.
the game does naturally have a clear out. There we go. Level reload upcoming. This decreases memory usage. Yeah. And that tends to help and stop the lag happening. Cool. So that island all has two legs. This has the standard uh, two eyes, four legs. That's very nice. But it looks like they've all lost their ears. I think the level reload is happening right now. So there we go. Level reload's happening. That's fine. Uh, it looks like they lost all their ears and they kept their legs. But it's all a bit strange, isn't it? <laughs> like that why that would happen i i'm really happy with the way the game's coming along it's still a little bit buggy there's still a bit to be improved optimization wise but i did have it on good settings so i played it before when it's been poor and i've been struggling to get it to run that many species on poor so it has improved a lot since the beginning so i'm really pleased at the direction the game is going i'm also i'm loving the amount of different animal parts you can get now the plants are coming along really well it looks like trees might become actually possible soon, if not now, because I always struggled with making the larger animals and the larger plant species be able to actually survive. Uh, those elephants were pretty big and they could survive really well, so I'm hoping they'll actually be able to survive absolutely fine. Right, so it looks like the reload's happened. Yeah, and we're just, I think before I end, I'm just going to try and uh, just bask in what this, <laughs> this looks like. Crazy number of elephants for some reason ultra bright grass that's growing weird little plants going on but yeah this is uh, <laughs> this is kind of crazy so yeah unfortunately it does look like our original species did not survive the uh, elephant apocalypse oh but we've got some very nice giant purple grass this is weird oh god i don't think that's normal i think that's like actual normal grass that's for some reason gone giant I don't think that's meant to happen. <laughs> but we've got some giant grass. That's okay. Uh, we've got a ton of elephants, some two-legged with four eyes, some four-legged with two eyes. All of them have dropped their elephant ears for some reason. And half of them, if not all of them, have changed from being mammals to um, amphibians, <laughs> which is really strange. But I really like where the game's going. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. And I think I'm going to do another episode where we focus more on maybe some deserty type stuff. So we'll make it ultra hot. We'll make some insects. We'll make some actual birds that hopefully do last this time around. Maybe some different types of ways that plants can grow. Uh, get some get some other stuff going. Maybe a proper land one rather than have any water. I think that'd be quite fun. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like what's in, please leave a like and subscribe. A massive thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members. Clint, David, Len, Valise, Laurie Lord, T-Chaos, Toolman, Nacho Cheese, Mikey Soundtrack, King of Thorns, Skylar Burchell, Charles, Mint Salad, Lax, Brian, Mickey, David, Tyler, and Cordry Pierce. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are just amazing. Thank you so much for all your support. It means a lot to me. So, yeah, thanks. So, cheers, guys, and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.